Hello. Hi. How are you? Seriously, how are you? Like, really, how are you? So, welcome to Idiot. This is my podcast because everyone and their motherfucking moms have podcasts. So, here we are. As if you need one more voice to listen to, here we motherfucking are. What is this podcast, you're asking yourself? I don't know. We're going to find out together. What I want it to be is like the best conversation you have with your best friend. You know that best friend who doesn't hold back? Not trauma dumping, but that best friend who tells it how it is, and there's always something juicy that you're like, what? No, wait, really? That, because I hate, you know, the friends. I don't hate my friends, but I hate when I can't have real conversations with friends about what's really going on and that their go-to is everything's great, everything's great. And like, I, I okay, that sounds judgy. And I don't want to judge because I'm actually guilty of being like, yeah, it's great. You know, the kids are great. Steven's great. My job is really so fulfilling. Um, I just meditated this morning. I'm feeling really good and grounded. You know, what the hell is that? Ooh, I want to say the air conditioning just came on and that that might fuck up the sound royally. I'm going to have to pause for a second because I really don't want this to not be usable. And we're back. Do you want to know something really pathetic? The air conditioning came on and my immediate reaction was, oh, I got to get Steven. I got to ask Steven what to do, how to turn it off. Isn't that really sad? I have become so dependent on Steven to help me with so many things in life, so many things that I am capable of. I don't know why this is, but I've just become so dependent. I'm just saying my immediate reaction was, I got to tell Steven, no, I don't. I just need to find the remote and turn it off. I'm capable. I can do hard things as Glennon Doyle once said, and now I hear it every fucking day. We can do hard things. Okay. But anyway, back to what we're saying. My vision is I want this to be a real good conversation you're having with a friend. That's it. I'm going to tell you stories because I've got crazy ones. I'm going to do prank calls because I'm still 12 years old in my heart. Actually, I am actually 25 in my heart. I'm going to be 36 very soon in a month, but I feel 25. I I told Steven about it and he was like, oh my God, you got sober when you were 25. I was drinking and using pretty much on a daily basis since around 15. And I got sober when I was 25. And maybe that's why I still feel that age. Who knows? I am full of fear right now. And it's not, I'm not complaining because that's the thing too. It's, I'm well aware of how uh, blessed I am in my life, but I'm, I'm feeling a lot of fear because i am been making content for, for so long and I'm losing the drive to, to make it consistently. I'm more enjoying watching other people make content and than I am making my own. Now, this is to say the stuff that I used to make, the kind of comedy that I used to make, I'm, I'm not feeling the drive to make it anymore. I just have to force myself to do it. And I wonder, it's like, I see it done all the time online. I see all these other creators making uh, content. And like with TikTok, it's not just you know, actors and writers, it's like, you know, real people who are just picking up their phone and making these funny videos and these cool concepts. And everyone's a content creator now, I feel like. And it's, I'm really enjoying watching everyone express themselves online. I mean, really, it's 
incredible the amount of self-expression and creativity that I'm seeing online. It's it's so inspiring to watch and I kind of I'm just enjoying sitting back and watching it, but then I have to pay my bills. <laughs> and um but you know, you do something for so long. I was talking to my friend Jack about this. He's like, every couple of years, he changes jobs because he's like, I've done it. I did my best at it, moving on, onwards and upwards. Like I just, you know, you got to keep things interesting and keep evolving as a human. And, you know, I started out doing this like character-based comedy and then obviously Helen Horbath took off, which is my character. That's the square face that says all the pickup lines. Like she was the one who like made me famous and then I got tired of doing her, so I so I switched it up to, to other type of comedy. And then I got pregnant, and I started writing about that. And then I had ba- two babies, and I started writing about that. And now the like mom comedy, parenting comedy is feeling like tired to me. I've done it. I've done a lot of mom comedy. So here I am sitting, you know, playing with my kids, my one and three year old, and my main concern is not what video to make, but like how I'm going to potty train my three-year-old son and making sure my one-year-old is hitting her milestones and that I'm doing everything I can. Also trying to, you know, cook dinner and uh, keep the house clean, you know, especially on the weekends. And so I put on YouTube and I start looking at kids shows. Initially when Alfie was young, it was Dave and Ava it's like a knockoff Coca Melon. It's like Coca Melon, but not as famous. But for some reason, Alfie loved that. But then I started seeing all these things that like Coca Melon and Dave and Ava. Basically, it's 3D animation and they do like nursery rhymes and supposedly educational stuff. But apparently, like the way that it's shot, the 3D animation and the fact that they change shots every two to three seconds. It's kind of like crack for your babies, apparently. Now, this is not scientifically proven. This is just literally what I hear around, is that Coco Melon and Dave and Ava and shows like that are like crack. And so I was like, oh, that's not good. So I start looking at more things like Sesame Street or Blippi or Miss Rachel. Jack Hartman, I think his name is, that old school dude who writes these pop songs for kids. And so I'm playing all this shit for my kids, right? At the end of the day. And sometimes it's the beginning of the day and also the middle of the day. So I'm doing that and I'm like, God, there's something really funny about kids shows, about the repetition. Open, open, open. Good job. And I just thought to myself, oh my God, Pamela Pupkin needs a children's show. I've learned all of these techniques through the countless hours of like speech therapy and, you know, OT and all the stuff that Alfie has been through with early intervention for his autism. So I feel like I'm just so wrapped up in that world. Plus I'm like constantly watching kids shows because my kids are watching them. And Stephen and I look at each other, we're like, God, we could make pop tracks for kids, like really good pop tracks, you know, covering colors and letters and numbers and shapes and animals and potty training and swimming lessons and brushing your teeth song. And like all of these things that we're, we're so in the middle of it right now with a one and a three-year-old. And I just thought, God, we make content. I make comedy. Steven makes music. You know, these are two powerful tools to help kids learn. Why don't we make a funny fucking show for kids with like amazing pop tracks? So without overthinking it, because that is one of the blessings of having ADHD is you just are very impulsive. And so without overthinking it, we just dove in and did it and started writing songs and writing segments for a kid show. It has been so much fun. It has been so fulfilling. I've just enjoyed it so much. Initially, when we shot it, it was like me doing the songs and me doing the the segments. But then I thought, no, 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 no. This needs to be funny. This needs to be character driven. And so I put Pamela Pupkin as the star. Pamela Pupkin is my Southern workout queen. The kids love doing her themed workout videos. And she is just such a fun animated character. And it's my hope that all these little kids will walk around with a Southern accent 
after watching Pamela Pepkin. So we switched out with Pamela and all of a sudden it was like the funniest shit we've ever seen in our lives. I shoot with the crew all the time and I shoot comedy videos with them and I've never seen, um, our editor had a full on asthma attack from watching a segment because she was laughing so hard. And it was literally an episode on the color blue. And my DP had to break, had to cut like 16 times because he was literally pissing himself laughing. So I just felt like I'm onto something here. You know, a show for young kids that's also funny and fun to the parents. Because the fact of the matter is like, we're sitting our kids down. We're desperate. We don't have the fucking village, dude. Like we don't have the village. It's not natural. It's not normal. We're expected to do everything, to play with them, to teach them, to cook for them, to clean after them. It's just not natural to not have the village. So sometimes YouTube becomes our village and YouTube, and I cannot express how grateful I am for shows like Sesame Street and Miss Rachel and Blippi and, you know, these YouTube educational kids shows that are, because I can feel like, okay, I can take a break for a minute and I know my kids are at least watching something and learning something, but also sometimes they're annoying. And I, and I think to myself, gosh, the parents inevitably are watching these shows with their kids because they're not far from their kids. So imagine if I could have all these little Easter eggs, you know how like DreamWorks does that, you know, Alfie, my son is obsessed with the show with the movie Cars. And there's all these jokes in there that are aimed towards parents that the kids will never understand, but they're like Easter eggs for the parents. That's the idea. We shot a ton of them and we haven't released them yet. Am I terrified? Yes. Especially because my comedy that I make for adults and my content for adults is not appropriate for kids. So it's like, I've got this raunchy, you know, pussy jokes, comedy for mostly women. Like my audience is mostly 80% women. And then now I want to make a show for kids. I mean, I am making a show for kids. I mean, I've shot, we shot like six episodes already. We just have not released them yet. We're just trying to figure out the best way to do that. But I'm so excited. It's called Pammy's World. And the pop tracks are amazing. We've obviously tested them all out on the kids. Alfie is like asking for them all the time. Play the color song, owl song, raindrop song. He wants them all. So we know, we know they're catchy. And then the segments are just like educational and funny. But anyway, so that's what I've been doing because yeah, I've just, I've not been inspired to make comedy and content recently for adults. I've been wanting to start this podcast for a while, but the, the voice in my head is saying like, who's going to want to listen to you? Even though I literally just had our New York Times bestselling audiobook that I just released. And I'm like, my voice is telling me that no one's going to want to listen and I have nothing useful to say. So that's a, that's a constant battle in my head. I, I can't do this. I, 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 I need to, I don't think that I, I have got to, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I need to start over. How do I start over? I don't see the fucking point, dude. Like, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. I'm, I am so all over the place today. I'm just full of fear because I'm so scared I'm going to lose everything I have. It's that classic fucking addict mindset of just crippled by a thousand forms of fear. Crippled! Dude, I feel so crippled right now. Crippled that I'm going to lose what I have and, 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 not get what I want and lose what I have and, and, and what does this all mean? And are we just products of capitalism? And am I a bad mom? And is my marriage going to fail? And, you know, are people going to stop following me? And what the fuck does it matter? Well, it matters because I have to pay my fucking bills, dude. You know, I'm just, I, I'm in a lot of fear right now. And, and, um, and, and I'm dry. I have not been to an AA meeting in months. Uh, I, I used to call my sponsor a lot. I haven't called my sponsor in a long time. And so I'm just feeling, you know, a lot of pressure. And I know you're like, shut the fuck up, Laura. You've got it made. But yeah, right now I do, but I have to keep it. You know, that, that's the, that's the scary bit is that I feel like I'm going to lose everything. You know, Steven woke me up this morning, Laura, your engagement's down. You, you, are you still losing followers on Instagram? You know, 
you're not as relevant, you know, and he's saying this because he's blunt with me. He's blunt with me and he's telling me, you know, and so I feel this pressure and I'm like, oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I choked on my <laughs> own saliva. But I'm like, all right, fine, like set up the podcast. I'll start the podcast today. I'll start it right now. I'll start it right now. That's why I'm starting this right now because I'm terrified that I'm going to lose everything and I'm not going to be able to pay my mortgage and we're going to all have to live out on the street and uh, then I'm going to relapse and get addicted to cocaine again and lose my children and lose my husband. And yeah, that's where my mind is going. So woke up this morning in a lot of fear and was told by Steven, who's very fucking blunt, dude, very fucking blunt. The man does not sugarcoat. The man does not say, you're doing great, honey. Everything's going to be fine. Nope. No, that's my role. I'm the one who says, it's all good. We live in an abundant world. It's all going to work out. Let's just be in the moment. And it always works out. It always does. That's my role. His role is your follower count is down. You're losing your relevancy. Um, how are we going to pay these bills? You know, Laura, we spend this much a month and, you're, and we're not going to be able to afford it anymore. If something doesn't change, get a brand deal in. Do a fucking another dildo fucking brand deal, dude. Or, or we're not going to pay our mortgage. So, so I said, fuck it, dude. Just just set up a podcast, even though I don't know why anyone wants to listen to me. I don't understand why anyone gives a fuck about me. I don't fucking get it, dude. There's so many voices and creators online posting content every five minutes. Everyone and their motherfucking mom and grandma has a podcast. Why do you care? Why do we care? I don't get it. <laughs> This was supposed to be funny. This was supposed to be funny. This podcast, I was going to fucking prank call my sister. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Why am I sorry? Because you just had to listen to this rant. <laughs> oh, my God. But... You know, I don't want you to think I'm shit-talking Steven, even though he can be a real asshole at times. You know, he's, 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 he's also what I need, because without him, that voice that tells me that I'm a piece of shit, and that I'm not enough, and that, and that nobody gives a fuck, and that I should just kill myself, he keeps that voice in check. And he, and he keeps pushing me, you know, to keep creating. And, and, and I'm forever grateful for him for that. I'm forever grateful. I'll never forget when we first met 11 years ago, he was the one that said, you've got something. You know, you have a gift. Use it. Don't just sit on it. Don't just sit there and, and be depressed. Use your gift. It's selfish if you don't. Here's a camera. Film something. And then he was the only one that watched my content for like a year. It was just him laughing and cheering me on. So I'm grateful for him telling me the truth. It's just hard to hear sometimes. Um, and that goes for everyone. Every, I truly believe everyone has a gift. Everyone has a gift and, and we're meant to use it and share it with the world and express ourselves and to help heal the world through self-expression. We're all, we all have a gift, whether it's to be an, a mom and nurture those kids, or if you own a bakery and to bake those motherfucking cakes and make them beautiful, whatever your gift is, we all have one, at least one, at least. And it's our duty to share that gift with the world. And, and for me, my gift is, is, you know, performing, it's comedy. And what I've recently realized is it's being vulnerable and telling the truth, that that's very healing for people. I'm just going through a transition, you know, that existential crisis, that what's the point, that, that thing, that's what's happening. And I try my best to meditate 
and get centered and do less. But then that fear of losing it all creeps in. I posted recently, what's the book that changed your life? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I, I need, I'm seeking, I'm, I'm needing help. And a couple of people recommended the Tao Te Ching. I hope I'm saying that right. I, I really hope I'm not butchering that. But nonetheless, dude, it felt like every motherfucking page, he was just telling you to do nothing. <laughs> just do nothing. Think nothing. Just be. <laughs> I'm like, okay, dude, that's awesome, but gots to pay my bills. Gots to pay my bills. But if I could just find more moments to just be alive and just be, that would be cool. <laughs> I felt like I was rolling my eyes at a lot of it, which shows how disconnected I am. Um, but I'm trying to just re-listen. I get in these places where I get crippled with fear and I don't do I don't take action um, because I think, what's the point? And that's a dangerous place to be. What's the point? The point is to serve people through my gifts. The point is to help heal the world through my gifts. And I believe that's everyone's point, is to love and be loved and help heal the world through our gifts, whatever those gifts are. I literally have my nanny who's here during the week while I'm working with my kids. I just saw her walk by with a stroller and her gift, one of her many gifts is to love and nurture my children when I'm working and be patient and tolerant and compassionate and understanding and playful. And my God, she's so fucking brilliant at it. I mean, I trust her with everything. And that is a gift. I'm not going to say that's her only gift, but that is one of them. And it is truly amazing to see. I'm conflicted because I'm a really good mom. When I'm with them, I am present some of the time and playful. And I can teach them things and um, they feel safe with me and I'm intuitive with them and I know what they need. I feel like a really goddamn good mom. And then that's, that's the other conflict because, you know, during the weekends I'm 24 seven with them. Whereas during the week, you know, I'm only with them half days and I feel that guilt of, I should be with them all the time, you know, and I want to be on the weekends. I'm like, God damn it. I should be doing this full time. You know, but then I love my work and I love creating. This is just the, the dilemma of every working mom. This is not unique, but um, this is not unique. But the fact, what I'm trying to say is I love being a mom and I love my work, even though I struggle with both. I love it overall, but there's major anxiety attached to it. Like yesterday we took the kids to um, my friend's four-year-old's birthday party and there was like a ball pit and a petting zoo and um, literally, it went really well, other than the fact that Alfie kicked a chicken. He kicked a chicken, and he got um, kicked out of the petting zoo. Um, the only fucking vegan family dude at the party, he is the only kid who has not eaten a chicken, and he went and he kicked it. He kicked a chicken. My son kicked a chicken. And then he got... And the... the the zookeeper dude was like, that's it, out. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. He kicked a chicken. But other than my son kicking a chicken, you know, it went well. He needed to leave after 10 minutes. He was like, big car, big car, big car, and just wanted to leave. It was overwhelming, all the kids. So we went in the big car and we breathed for a minute. And then he came, went back and played. And he was brilliant. And Poppy is just so easy. I always think like every, you know, Par parents with more than one kid, they normally have one easy one and one difficult one, right? Or one easy one, one more strong-willed, you know, rebellious one. No, one is not better than the other. One's just easier than the other. Um, and Poppy is easy. She, right now, knock on wood, she is easy, baby. But my point is, I was so tensed for most of that trip, terrified he was going to have a meltdown, terrified that it was just going to be stressful. And 
I, I need work in that area of just getting out of my comfort zone and taking the kids places. I'm not good in that sense. I'm good in like being at home with them and singing to them and cuddling them and feeding them and that that stuff I love and cause and doesn't cause me much stress. We are always changing and evolving and growing, and that's what's happening to me right now. I don't want to do make the content I I've been making for years. I'm done. I feel done with it. I feel like this podcast is something new. It's something different. I can just sit here and speak my truth. I'm going to record once a week and maybe you'll give a shit and maybe you won't. And, 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 and that's okay. One thing I learned in the Tao Te Ching, I really hope I'm saying that right, was to do the work and leave it. Do the work and leave it. Don't attach yourself to the result. How many downloads? How many people bought my cakes? How many this? Do the kids have a good day today or not? What does this say about me as mom? Nope. Do the work and leave it. Do the work and leave the results up to the universe, up to God, whatever you believe in. Just do the work and surrender. That's it. So this is me doing the work and I hope that you will do your work, whatever it is that you love and you're passionate about. I hope that you can find time every day to do that thing, do that work, do live in your purpose and leave it. Live in your purpose and leave it. Live in your purpose and surrender. I hope you'll do that. I'm going to do that too. Let's hold each other accountable. And I love you. And I want to thank you for being here with me. Probably a lot of you through the years. Maybe some of you are new listeners, but thank you for for being here with me and and letting me share my life and my experience and my comedy and my art with you. And thank you for taking that in. And I hope that it brings you clarity, peace, entertainment, inspiration, distraction something. I hope I could do that for you because I truly don't have many other skill sets. So this is it, man. This is it. Okay. I could keep talking, but I won't until next time. Um, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and subscribe to my TikTok. Um, if you have young kids, subscribe to my YouTube because that kid show's coming soon, and I hope you and your little ones love it. And if you haven't gotten my book, I wrote two books, one called Idiot, one called Idiots, and it's a compilation of essays, stories from my life, funny, sad, dramatic, all the things. And uh, you can listen to the audiobook if you like listening to things, which I think you do, because here we are. 43 minutes later and you're listening. Um, so I hope, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that you find time today to do something you're passionate about, something that brings you joy. And I hope you, you're able to do that thing and, um, and stay present. Just be here now and trust that it's all going to be okay. And it's all going to work out better than we could have ever imagined because I said so.